up Juice Crew? Happy new month. How are y'all doing on this first day of November? <laughs> this year is coming to an end. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> so I will start this month off with a story time as I do my hair. I got this new wig in from a local beauty supply store. Ooh, good. I did keep it. So I know if I kept this um, stocking cap or not. Yes, I know it should be um, tan or whatever to go over my, head, over my head, but I don't, I don't think I need to do the ball cap method or whatever. So story time is going to be me doing my hair and me talking about my, um, how I got into the adult entertainment business. Ooh, child. So I got the hair from this beauty supply store called Queen. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Hopefully, I have all the specs in here, and I can tell y'all what the hair is. But anyways, let's get at least started on the story because I don't think the hair is gonna take that long to do. Um, I also have, you know, some got to be stuff just in case I decide I want to. Um, glue something down some edges or or whatever i do got some little uh accessories and then i have my blow dryer down here at the bottom i have two different types of stocking caps i have this black stocking cap that i got when i was at the beauty supply store the trial uh, wigs and then i have just this knit thing I don't know we'll see what I can do with whatever um and I have my mirror a dirty mirror but whatever anyway um so, I decided to do my story time like this because for me to just kind of sit here and just talk to y'all it's like boring so I might as well do something with my hands instead of using them to talk with and um do story time uh, sorry about the nails I am going to paint them soon but whatever so let's let's get uh, into the story so how I started in the adult entertainment business well like textual intercourse I didn't start doing that till I was 22 so I started that late <laughs> in life and um, a lot of people was asking me, are you waiting for marriage? Are you waiting to all this stuff? No, I was just waiting for the right time, I guess, or whatnot. Um, <laughs> I knew if I was going to do anything younger, it was going to be a problem for me. So I chose to wait years. So, so I was with an ex, um, had to be in 2000. Five, four, three, two, something like that. Early 2000s. And we are kind of both in the lifestyle. Um, we are both voyeurs as well as expeditionists. Expedition, exhibitionists. There we go. <laughs> so, you know, uh, me and him were pretty much, you know, kind of in the same lifestyle. I, you know, I just kind of started really putting myself out there like again i was taking pictures of myself and putting myself on you know adult sites and stuff like that so um by the time i met him i had already had a couple of things on you know like rude.com was the big thing back in the day um and so um also like sending pictures to dudes you know all that type of stuff like when people tell me Oh, I would never do anything like that. Oh, I would never. Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine myself doing that. And I think to myself, if you ever send any type of picture to anybody, a booty pic, a boob pic, some legs, your whole coo, you know, coo coochie, 
whatever. If you did that, if you sent that shit through the phone, it's already out there. <laughs> it's already in the cloud. It's already in the internet. So you've already done adult entertainment. You just don't think you did it, but it's already out there. I have pictures in my Google cloud that were that's years like what how you still got this picture and i don't even have this picture so it's like don't think your pictures that you sent up to the amount of years ago is not somewhere on the internet because it is it is yeah and i was 26 27 when i started um in my adult entertaining things but anyways he met this girl quote unquote that's a whole nother story. Uh, so he told me this person was coming to his house. She wanted to work out of um, work in Houston to see what type of money she can make out here and all this stuff like that. And I was like, okay, that has nothing to do with me. Yada, yada. So by the time I met her and I actually talked to her, I met her three different times. The first time I didn't meet her to like months, months almost a year that she had been here like i didn't know she was gonna be here that long he said she was only gonna be here for a while whatever so by the time i met her i met her two other times and then the third time is when i actually you know we started talking about you know the things that she did or how she became you know this quote unquote escort you know how did she how did she end up in this lifestyle and Whew, some stories is like holy but you know you hear a lot of stories like that not and not everybody has that type of story you know like i don't have that story i've never been molested i've never been raped by anybody at all some of the women that are in this lifestyle have been and you know that's how you know things go, go on like that and then some people you know like strippers and stuff like that some people do that stuff for you know going to school um helping like an elderly parent or somebody that's sick you know they don't always do it just because they had traumatic you know something in their life but anyways so once i got to know her and talk you know she's pretty cool she's a pretty cool person um we went to my battery wants to die okay so when I met her for this third time I'm gonna show y'all how this wig look this is the display because why would they cut all that off because they didn't have another color I can't even tell you the color of this but it's from the Janet collection. It looks like this. And the color is like a cinnamon red. Um, I don't know, ginger color. I forgot what the name was because I thought he was going to leave it on there. But he did it. It was originally $50.99, but I got it. Um, like, you know, they didn't want to give me that 10% off because this was the only color that was left. Okay. So anyways, the third time I met her, you know, like I said, we, we talked and I got to know her. And by this time I had quit my job at what is now called at home. Back then it was called Garden Ridge. Um, so I quit my job. That's a long story, not really a long story, but they weren't trying to pay me. They tried to, this ain't, you know. So anyways, um, so, you know, I was really getting to want to understand how did she do this? How did she, you know, make this living? Because now, you know, I really didn't have any responsibility. I was moving out of my apartment soon because my lease was coming up. I didn't have a job, but, you know, um, I the, the, the boyfriend or the ex, he was one of those... Um, 
dudes. He was one of the first boyfriends I've ever had that actually done anything for me. Like, I never had to want for anything. Um, so, he was like, I can come stay with him. You know, all that good stuff. So, I really didn't, I didn't want to go back to my mom's house. And I didn't want to live with anybody else. I kind of didn't want to even live with him. But, um, I didn't. I just, you know, we ended up just going on the road, me and her. Um, we first went to Louisiana. Uh, cause she had a person out there that she wanted to see. Ooh, you know, this cheap synthetic weed. Well, it doesn't feel cheap, but I'm brushing it and look all this, all this hair that's coming out of it. But it is a pretty color. <gasps> Look how pretty. <laughs> and then it's, um, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if it's a full cap wig. If, is that how y'all say it? I don't know. And then it has this little lace part in the front. And then it has lace there with some baby hairs. Oh, I ain't doing this thing, no justice. See the little baby hairs on it. Mm, I should have got some scissors, but anyways. Um so I took her to Louisiana for a while. No, we went to Louisiana so she can, you know, meet up with one of her people. So I don't know, whatever. And then that went well and I was like, okay, I can I think I can do this. Like, you know, let's let me let me see if, what what I can do. Since the first twenty five dudes I slept with, I pretty much gave stuff for free. You know what I mean? I'm like, shit, if I'm already doing this stuff for free Well, you know, let me dibble, let me dibble and dabble. So what we end up doing before we actually went on the road was we started working out of uh, Houston to, you know, get me used to, you know, what I'll be dealing with and all that stuff like that. And so, you know, we worked out of Houston for a while off of 610 and Stella Link, if anybody is from Houston that knows that area, that's where, you know, we was working out of. There was a couple of hotels that, you know, whatever. So fast forward, um, we decide to take this traveling, to start traveling with it. Um, one reason was she needed to get back to Baltimore is where she was from. Um, like her, somebody in her family was ill and they didn't know if that person was going to, you know, be here for a while. So they was like, you know, hey, if you want to see so-and-so, you need to come um now or whatnot so we just decided okay let's go let's do this traveling thing and we started louisiana went to georgia north carolina south carolina baltimore atlanta i mean it wasn't atlanta it was Lithonia. that's my story in atlanta, uh in georgia where i almost died i'll tell y'all that another time so um, when we got to North Carolina, North Carolina, no, South Carolina, I think. When we was in Houston, um, it was these three dudes that always used to come. Wherever hotel we was at, I think it was her friends or whatever. I'm telling y'all this because he's going to come. Oh, God. Um, this dude that she, I guess she liked so much, um... Oh, I gotta tell y'all all that other stuff too. Shit. Okay, so when we worked in Houston, when we was doing our thing in Houston, she knew, uh, knew of or knew of this, I don't know how she knew him, but the dude that started BBW Highway, I don't know if it's, if he's still the person or if it's a new person, I don't know, but when I met him, it was a dark skinned black man from Chicago. Um, he started BBW Highway. So she knew him. He came out. We did some stuff for his website. And then 
her and this other girl was trying to do this like gang bang thing that really didn't turn out kind of turned out really bad <laughs> like anyways so um all of this i'm telling y'all this is gonna come up you know so i met the dude from bbw highway we hit it off pretty well and you know it seemed like everywhere we went because i think he met us in georgia too in north carolina or south carolina like he came to where i was at or whatnot so um when we was in north south carolina's last time she decided that she wanted to call the dude from Houston that she met and ask him if he wanted to come along. Like, I think they had this planned out when they met in Houston. Um, she was telling me the reason why she wanted him to come was because, you know, I was getting most of the calls and, you know, she was you know, lonely. She wanted to cuddle with people and all this stuff like that. I'm thinking, this is a job. <laughs> like, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking at none of these people as being my husband or anything like that. So, it's like, this is just a job. But, you know, she was saying, you know, I want somebody to cuddle up with me at night and I want people to eat. I was saying, okay, whatever. That was her excuse for bringing him along. <sighs> she also told me at one point in time that she was pimp like she had a pimp a couple of times that's you know when I started when I first got to know her so yeah I think she brought him along because she needed a pimp or she thought we needed a pimp we were doing fine by ourselves us two girls together doing the work that we did making our own money we were fine I thought we were fine but anyways so she brings him along. Um, it wasn't too long before I left them. Um, he started to do that whole pimperish type stuff. Um, he tried to tell me about, you know, a client that I had and, oh, you were just sitting there talking to him all day. You ain't make no money and all this stuff like that. And, you know, one time he tried to force me to give him sloppy toppy and I was like <laughs> I just laughed like I'm, I'm sure you know I'm not gonna do that like and he was trying to force me to do it and all I could do was laugh because m me and this dude he's maybe an inch taller than me my voice is deeper than his voice so he already got that kind of pimp talk you know already but you're you're not a pimp you're n no I seen where you came from. I seen what you do. No, it, it, you ain't pumping no fear in my heart. So after that incident happened, I decided, okay, I'm gonna get my own room. Y'all have y'all own room. Cause again, at that time, the two of us together, it was fine. We have our own separate beds, we females, whatever. Now you bringing this dude in the mix, ain't happening. So I get my own room for the next couple of times. And then things just started getting even, you know, started getting worse um, between me and the girl. Me and the dude, it was already a, a done. Like, I wasn't even feeling him like that anyways. Like, whatever. But some females, when they have a man with them, it's for the man now what we had going on or what the connection we had that I thought we were, you know, cool, went downhill. So now he's answering her phones. He's answering her questions. When I'm talking to her, how are you answering for her? And I'm asking her questions, but anyways. So when all that started happening, it's like, okay, now we are, no. Last, my last straw was, um, my phone was dying. It was like really dying. And I needed a charger. 
they act like they didn't have one for me. My friend who I left with act like she didn't have a charger for me and was like, well, you know, you pretty much asked out. <laughs> Am I? Okay, I understand this story. So what happened was uh, the next day, my phone actually died. I had to go to Walmart, get a whole nother phone just to get the charger. And then it was like, wow, thanks friend. So I let them know the next day, hey, I'm done. Like I'm leaving. I don't know where y'all gonna go, what's gonna happen, because I'm taking my car. The only thing I had to pay was my car insurance, which is liability. Y'all know liability was like 50 some dollars back then, if y'all don't know. And then I had a prepaid cell phone. So I'm making, I already made them, I, the money I make is already paying for that stuff. Now, before I, <laughs> Before I told them, hey, whatever, whatever, I had called old dude from BBW Highway. And I was like, hey, we ain't working out here. I need to, you know, what can I do? Do you know anybody? Yada, yada, yada. He was like, yeah, I know this girl, this woman, who's not too far from you. She's in Richmond, Virginia. I give her a call, yada, yada, yada. I was like, cool. So... Um, that next day, he, that next morning, he called me and let me know. She was like, cool, you can come by. I was like, all right. So I let them know, hey, what, what's going on? Like, I didn't really care, but I care for my friend more than anything because we made this pack of coming out. We made this pack of doing this. We made a pack. And then all of a sudden you allowed this dude to come in and just change up our whole situation. So, yeah, let me see how this thing looks. Girl, and it's two of these. I use this as my wig, as my wig to hold my wig together. Okay, let's put this wig cap on. I should do it like I see everybody else do it. And cut and push it, pull it all the way down. <laughs> to cover my eyeballs. And cut and do like the ball cap method. Mm, is it that serious? Probably not. Oh, I do need to get some scissors to cut this lace though. Uno momento. Okay. Back. Um, and so... I let them know that I, you know, whatever. She asked me if I could take her back to Baltimore because that's where her family was. I don't. I think we only got a little bit out of Baltimore. We was at this cool hotel. Well, I don't know if it's cool, but whatever. So, anyways, I took them back to Baltimore. This hotel we used to that we stayed at. Um. And pretty much, you know, chunk the deuces to her. Hope you have a good life. Hope whatever happens with this dude. Don't know, don't care. Because, you know, we could have been. So, anyways, I drop them off. I go to the laundromat that was right up the street. Wash my clothes. Give, this, give the other girl enough time to do whatever it is that she had to do before I just came out there. And then... Yeah, so, meeting the next group of women that I, <sighs> okay, so the first person, she was strictly just escorting, escort means, you know, hoeing, selling, prostituting, however you want to say it, escorting, so that's what she was strictly doing. The other two women one was an escort type of thing and the other one was fetish the first i mean one she was escort fetish because she also did fetish stuff too and then the other one was strictly fetish light skin dark skin i don't want to say it like that but i don't be like one girl two girl one girl two girl i guess a one girl two girl 
first girl. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even give a shit. I don't even talk to talk to them no more, so I don't care. Um so oh, how do I cut this lace off? I'm gonna show y'all how it looks and then cut the lace off. It has a comb in the back and a comb on both sides. I think I'm gonna have to take these combs on the sides out because I don't have any side hair for it to grab onto. Okay. I think I need a ponytail holder. Or something to keep this. Ooh. Hey girl. I think it could have heat on there. See, I'm mad that he did all this stuff. Heat resistant fibers safe to up to 360. Oh. I don't know if y'all can see how long it is on me. Nothing. Okay, let me go get a ponytail holder. Damn, I'm never ready. Okay, back. Is it that tight? It left a mark on my head. Okay. So, when I met this new girl, this, yeah, the new two, um, okay, the two girls that I end up or going to used to be girlfriend and girlfriend. They had been in a relationship for some years like 10 plus years but um they broke up girl one got married and it's a long story <laughs> it's a long story it's something i don't even care to even talk about because it's not my story to tell but um so I go to her house, two bedroom, one bath, apartment. If y'all know anybody that is a hoarder, and I mean a, like a hoarder, hoarder. Not just clothes, not like me, like I hoard clothes and shit like that, or no, I'm a pack rat, I, I'm not a hoarder. I'm a pack rat. Hoarders are different from pack rats. So when I get into her house, she let me know first when I met her. Um, <laughs> actually, the second girl let me know when I met her, the first girl, that her car looks exactly like how her house looks. Her car is trash. And I say trash in the sense of so much stuff was in her car. Like, I can't believe you were driving around with that much shit in your car. But anyways, my dad was like that too, so. Um, I'm just cutting the lace off here. As carefully as possible. Um, so, and trying to keep baby hairs until I don't really need them or whatever. Um, so, 
when I got to the house, the house was, oh my God. Like I had to s step on shit, step on clothes. I'm stepping on trash. I'm stepping on stuff just to get into the house. Um, she showed me around the two, the second bedroom, if it was clean, if it didn't have all the shit in there, would have been an area for me to sleep in. But she was like, well, my husband, you know, he goes on for work, he leaves. So, you know, the majority of the time we'll be here. You can sleep on the couch and, you know, we'll figure out, you know, as time goes, because, you know, I'm just coming out the boo, you know, to our house and all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden, we, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, things are going good. You know, I meet our husband. He comes, I think, sometime after, you know, I don't know, a couple of days later. Um, now, in between that, we have worked. We have, you know, done things. Um, I'm thinking, what do your husband think you do? <laughs> because... Fetish is not the only thing she does, even though I think she lied to her husband and told her, well, all I do is fetish stuff. No, she be, she be getting it in. And, you know, me being green and stuff, uh, they were, you know, they were still friends and things like that. So, um, one girl called me and asked, like, what did we, what did we do today and stuff like that. And again, me being green about stuff. I'm like, oh, we did this, this, and the third. Not knowing that the girl had lied to her and told her we did something else on the third. Like, it was just a whole... It was like I was in between the issues. Like, it, it didn't make no sense to me. Like, the stuff that was going on. But, um, when I was with her, I ended up working, working with a lady in New York called Busty Baby Doll. That was actually my first, um, you know, big name person that I worked with. Um, I did some things with her. I did my first ever porno with her, with her company. And I don't know if I'm still on her website. Back then I was going by Juicy Kisses. Um, and not Miss Fat Juicy is what I go by now. But, um... Yeah, I work with Norma Stitz. Norma Stitz is in a Guinness Book of World Records for having the largest natural breast. Um, it's like, I don't know, I don't know what her size is, but I know she gets her bra specially made with whale bone <laughs> to, you know, hold, hold her boobies up. So, I worked with them. And then I realized, or after a while, when you working with somebody, it's like, you can tell some, some different things is going on. Again, I just, I'm just there. Like I'm there to enjoy the experience. I'm doing stuff that I've always wanted to do. I've had a sheltered life. You know, the places that I've been to, I would have never been. So I'm not looking to I'm not in no competition with anybody. I'm not trying to be in any in, in any competition with anybody. I'm just here. Like you tell me what to do. I'm okay. I can you know, I can try to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't. I don't. Whatever. So me and the first girl kind of got into not really into it, but for some reason, it's she's getting tired of me. She's lying to the other girl. Talk about I'm walking around her house naked while her husband is there and you know I'm doing all this extra stuff and I'm like no I say I think what it was because you know I I'm not I'm I ain't gonna lie for you I mean it ain't nothing to lie for if you sitting there lying to this girl and telling her you ain't doing this and telling your husband you ain't doing that but you really are and you're around somebody like me. I don't really, I'm not going to lie, but I'm not going to really tell it either. Like, if somebody asks me, well, did you and so-and-so go to here and there? I'll say, like, I did this. 
Now what the other person did, <laughs> that wasn't, I, I'm, I don't know what she did, but this is what I did. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to sit there and cover up a lie for you if you told so and so, oh, all we did was go out to eat with one of your, one of your, what's the names, but what we actually did was you went and fucked a whole bunch of dudes and I'm just here, like, do to do <laughs> type stuff and, you know, so, so I think she was, she was getting mad at me because I wasn't lying. I'm not one. I'm not. I'm not one of them females. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do all that extra stuff that's gonna get me in trouble. Like I'm somewhere that no one. I don't know nobody. I don't know anybody personally. You know. So I'm out here by myself, having to fend for my own life because who knows if you know someone try to set me up or something like that. But anyways. So now, you know, she's ready for me to go. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, whatever, whatever. So the second girl, she was like, well, just bring her my way. You know, we'll figure out something here. So I go, I was in uh, Richmond, Virginia. And the second person, the second girl, the girl, the, she lived in Woodbridge, Virginia, which was like a hour or so um away okay i gotta do that oh 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 i think i might have to do just a little bit of let's see if i can use these coins right quick I might have to do a little, excuse me, a little a little glue just to keep my keep this on. Let's see these little baby hairs. Okay. So I'm gonna just use some of this. This got to be gel. Anyways, so when I hook up with this next, the next girl is now is where I'm learning about fetish um, stuff. I'm learning about facing, butt drops, and trampling, and you know all this um, dominatrix stuff. She's the dominatrix, so. <laughs> This is like, oh, okay, I think I like, I think I like this. Cause she's like, you know, you don't have to sleep with nobody. You don't have to do all this stuff that you was doing. Let me show you this other lifestyle. And I was like, okay, okay, let me see what this is about. Let me see how different it is from the other stuff I was doing, right? And, um, so when I was out there, um, she got in contact with one of her subs that she always works with, y'all. If y'all know me, or if y'all seen any of my videos, he is the older white gentleman that I've always worked with. Well, yeah, like, he's 
cool as shit. He is cool as shit. Um, so she calls him. It's like, hey, I got this new girl. Yada yada. yada. You wanna, you know? And so. he's not my sub. He's her sub. So, but let's just say we was in the mountains of North Carolina, and places I have never been, like the fetish lifestyle, put me in another another arena of you know things and people and you know places I've like I say places I've never been. Um, I end up going to Florida. Amazing. I'm. Just, I tell I tell everybody this that that time was the best and worst time of my life. Um, of course, you know the cons is this you know not something you really want to be doing selling your selling your body you know on Craigslist or Backpage or wherever it is they post because I didn't do most of the, I didn't do the posting at all. Everybody I was with you know, posted us on websites or whatnot, you know, advertising yourself, that's, you know, that's something that, you know, you don't think that it's something you'll do. Um, but it was the best time of my life because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen the things that I've seen. I wouldn't have been the places I've been if I didn't do anything. You know, I would be stuck in Houston, Working a nine to five, going home, coming, uh, no, going to work and come home. Basic, going to work, come home, going to work, come home, going to work, come home. It's like that's not that lifestyle isn't for everybody. <laughs> like there are worker bees that are used to like I'm I'm half 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 a worker bee, half not a worker bee. Like when I know, you know, I like to be. Sometimes I like to have a schedule. I like to know that I'm going to work and I got to do this, 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 and then come home. I like I like that structure. Um, and then sometimes I'm a free bird and you can't cage this free bird. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, Pisces, we have two different personalities. Um, and so, like, you know, I would have never seen, I would have never met the people that I've met and it's not they're not all bad people none they're not all bad people I mean of course you meet some undesirable people um but most of the women I've met were really cool women you know once you get to know someone's story and they tell you know tell you their stories like wow you know what I'm saying and even the men that I met if I didn't meet them then, you know, during, you know, something like that, it's like, I would have never met them. And some of them men were pretty fucking cool. Like, sometimes I didn't do anything. We just talked about shit. You know, talked about what was getting on their nerves or who was getting on their nerves. You know, sometimes men just won't want to talk. <laughs> to be honest, like, not all the time I was doing anything. Most of the time I was just sitting there listening to them talk and you know just having a conversation with um people and that was it um i had a lot of um regular um you know men that came um people that would come from hours and hours just to spend 30 minutes talking with me or you know something like that um so you know, it was not always, you know, a sex thing or something like that. It was pretty, you know, an average type of thing. I don't know. It just didn't seem like I was doing something. It just seemed like I was just living life and like, you know, I just ha so happened to be sleeping with somebody or, you know, doing something sexual with them and they leaving me a tip. You know, it doesn't, it didn't even, it didn't seem like I was doing anything unnatural you know what I mean like I said I was doing it the shit already free and up north is way different than down here up north they they spend money <laughs> I mean it ain't no 
I'm just saying. <laughs> if I was in it like I could have been in it, if I was in it, if I if I chose to be in it like I could be in it, man, nobody would like me. I will be a very hated woman. Even more hated than I am now with the little stuff that I do do. Um, it's like, uh, girl, if you would have known, we only knew. <laughs> if I would have took it, took it to the next level, it would have been a wrap. But um, I decided after doing it, I, I was in, I was in. The, the first round was from, was like three months. And in three months, I did a lot of shit. <laughs> so it was like, I think it was 2017. 2000, not 2017, 06, 06, 07. Cause I know I had just had a birthday that March. Right after that, it was like April, May, June. June is when I came back to come back to a normal lifestyle because you know my mama was calling me and you know everybody was so worried about me but my thing was wasn't nobody worried about me when I was there in Houston <laughs> now that I'm out and about and enjoying life not everybody's worried about me so whatever um so then I came back to do the boring lifestyle that everybody wanted me to do work and come home and work and come home and I was like come on now this ain't my lifestyle <laughs> so I went out a second time with the fetish um not with the first not with the first girl or the the very first girl you know the third the last person the last person I've been doing all my work with this last couple of years um, so I think it was maybe 2010 or something. I went out for a second round. It went, it was good, you know, but you know, you have to surround yourself with people who also wants to see, uh, you know, good things from you too, not just from them. I don't know. I can't explain it. It's like, um, yeah, they want yeah, they want to see a person do good, but you can't do better than them. You know what I'm trying to say like, oh yeah, you good, you good, but I ain't going to tell you I'm not going to do a whole bunch of stuff in front of you so that you can take what I do. Ooh, that was a lot of powder. Oh, I need the food baby hairs. I don't know, I'm trying to figure out something. Cause I think I glued the baby hairs down. <laughs> I think I glued the baby hairs down. Um, so yeah, I went. That was maybe a, a month or so that I was out there that stick the second time. And then this last final time I went out. Um, you know, I, I've done <sighs> fetish videos, I've done regular videos, I've done, you know, single videos with myself, you know, I do have an OnlyFans page, um, you know, people, people know me out in the fetish world, and you know, I have no issues. I have no issues with my lifestyle and the people who know, who, who think they know, you know, you really don't have no idea, especially. Like I used to, when I came home, the, the first or second time, whatever time that was, and I went to go hang out with my family for like, Thanksgiving or Christmas or one of whatever one of those holidays was and you know they tried to make it seem like oh you know me doing that stuff was because I had 
low self-esteem or you know I didn't um, care about myself or anything like that and I'm thinking to myself hey you don't know nothing about me like my family don't know nothing about me could have cared less um, it's for you to think a B that I have low self-esteem something is really wrong, wrong with you um, you would actually have to have for me I feel some people do but for me to even want to show my body in the light and I mean the internet has seen my entire body inside and out <laughs> um, you would have to have some type of self-esteem to even want to do anything like this or you know anything anything to do with your body um, so really nobody really got me into the adult entertainment I kind of just got myself into it I always felt when I was younger I always knew that I was gonna <laughs> that I was gonna do something something in the adult industry I don't know why I felt that way um as a youngin like but yeah that's pretty much how I got into being in the adult industry um I don't you know, I don't do any of my sessions now. Like back then, I would have sessions and sessions is like a face sitting session or a butt dropping session or a trampoline, something to do with fetish. Um, I stopped doing those because you know, I'm by myself um, and you can't trust everybody. Yeah, that is the end of my story time and how I uh, got into the adult entertainment business. Um, it just kind of, you know, fell in my lap type of situation. And I don't regret anything I do, um, anything I did, um, because it wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Like, I don't, I don't regret the people I've met, um, the things I've seen, the things I've been through, like it, again, made me the person that I am and I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change it. <laughs> I wouldn't change my experience for anyone. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. Cause like I say, um, Y'all, if y'all know the story, I'll probably tell y'all another story about, you know, my sheltered life and my dreams actually were deja vus because I end up being in the places that I dreamt of. Like, it was some it was some real deal. Like, I was 18, 19, just graduating high school, very depressed. Um and I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. Um, I contemplated suicide quite a lot of times. And I think my last attempt, um, did something, opened up something to where I was visualizing and dreaming of these places that you know, I would have never been been to if I was still in Houston. You know what I'm saying? If I would have still just done the regular stuff, I would have never seen the things that I've seen. Or, you know, like I say, deja vu. It's like, oh my gosh, I've been in this place before. I've been here before. And it's in North Carolina. Or it's in Florida. Or it's in Virginia. So it's like, how can I have been to that place if I was in you know what I'm saying? So, um, I prayed the whole time I was out there. Don't think I'm not, I'm not really religious, but I do believe in the most high. As y'all can tell, I do have a cross here. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. So I do talk to my ancestors, my spiritual guide and all that good stuff. So, you know, they were guiding me in 
the area that I was supposed to be in at that time. And can nobody tell me. You can't tell me nothing. I'm just saying because I've been through it. I lived through it. And I know that there is a higher power. Like I say, I have a story time for y'all when I almost was murdered in Georgia. And you can't tell me. That's all I'm saying. So, anyways, let me cut this story time shut. I mean, hopefully I answered... I don't know if I answered anybody's questions <laughs> about how I uh, got into um, adult entertainment, but this is just how I, you know, got into it. I didn't search through no agency, find anybody or anything like that. It just kind of happened the way it happened. And if I didn't explain anything that y'all was looking forward to or, you know, because that it is more to the story but i had to cut you know i can't tell every bits of the story because then this will be two hours three hours long but you know how i met the first person i went i was with to how i got with the last two women i was with you know there's stories in between that but again this story, story time will be extra long but anyway Thank you good people for just listening to me. I love to talk. <laughs> it doesn't seem like when you meet me in person, I'm really quiet and really shy until you get to know me, but I do like to talk a lot. <laughs> but um, anyways, thank y'all for listening to me. Um, more story time to come and hope y'all have a good rest of y'all day week weekend month year all that good stuff and yeah i'll talk to y'all later